Be very, very quiet. We're hunting rabbits. No, we're not hunting rabbits. We're going to talk more about titration. So hopefully you watched that last video. Um, you saw me perform a titration, and now it's a little less abstract. You can see some of these pictures and actually know what they are. What is this long tube up here? So we're going to look more closely at these titrations now. Um, we're going to look at a titration curve. What does that mean? What, what can we define from it? And how do we read it? We're going to see when we do titrations, where would we expect the equivalence point to be? Should it be at a neutral pH or acidic pH or basic pH? Um, and things like that. So we're gonna start with this titration curve. For a titration curve, you should always see your pH as your y-axis and the volume of titrant added uh, as your um, x-axis. So for this one, we can see we're starting at a low pH, so we must have an acid. And in this case, we're titrating it with a base, and we can see that right there, sodium hydroxide. So as we're adding the base, the pH is going up very, very slowly because pH is logarithmic. A pH of three is one-tenth as acidic as a pH of two and so on and so forth. But once we get close to that equivalence point, all of a sudden that pH shoots up very drastically and rapidly. And then we're gonna get towards the top and again we're gonna see that pH starting to uh, change very, very slowly. The equivalence point is the inflection point of that steep slope. Um, and you can see in this case, when we're titrating a strong base with a strong acid, we have a neutral pH around seven, which is what we should see when we have strong base, strong acid, or the reverse, if we were titrating a strong base with a strong acid. Um, so if it's run in a flask, you can see this is the opposite. Now we're starting at a very basic pH, so we're starting with some strong base, adding a strong acid, the pH is going down, all of a sudden near the equivalence point happens very rapidly, and the equivalence point is right there at a pH of seven. We could also get the equivalence volume if we wanted. We could see at that point we've added 25 milliliters of that hydrochloric acid. So if we knew the concentration of that, then we could determine how many moles of that we had added. Um, if we're doing the opposite, or not the opposite, but something different now, not strong acid, strong base, but if we had a weak acid titrated with a strong base, what we're going to see is that our pH in this case should be, at the equivalence point, should be slightly basic. Um, initial pH is going to be determined by the Ka of whatever that weak acid is. So we have multiple steps here as we do this. Um, before we've added any titrant whatsoever, if we have a weak acid, then that's all we have in the solution. And we could figure out what the pH of that is, just the normal way we do it would for a weak acid solution. Um, once we start adding some, um, uh, the strong base to that, we were, are going to convert some of that weak acid over to its conjugate base. So at that point in solution, all we would have is a weak acid and its conjugate base. So we would actually be making a buffer solution on the way to the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, the only thing we should have now is the conjugate base and none of the weak acid. So if the only thing we have left in solution is the weak conjugate base, we would have a slightly basic pH. And then once we had more additional strong base to that, now this, what we have in solution is strong base in addition to the weak conjugate base and our pH would become very, very basic. Um, so the amount of strong acid in the flask shown here is to be titrated by a strong base, which mark on the burette next to the flask indicates the amount of base required to reach the equivalence point. So A, B, C, or D. So if we're looking at, I guess we're counting the number of H plus ions, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we want the same number here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven should be D because we need an equivalent amount of acid to base. And if that's a one-to-one -one stoichiometric ratio, it'd be the same number of moles of each in that instance. Um, titration of a weak acid with a strong base. So, uh, or that's exactly what we saw here. So we're starting, again, acidic pH, because all we have is that weak acid. We start adding that strong base. You can see relatively slow increase until we get near the equivalence point, and then it shoots up very rapidly. And like I said, in this case, if it's a weak acid with a strong base, we'll see the equivalence point now no longer seven, not neutral, but slightly basic. It looks like this is something like 8.1 or 8.2. And then once we go beyond that, that strong slope, we get up towards the top now where we're seeing that slow uh, logarithmic increase in the pH as we add that base. And we could tell again, where's the equivalence point? We could also see what is the equivalence volume of that sodium hydroxide that we've added. Um, so initial pH is caused by the weak acid in the solution. Before the equivalence point, 
we're going to have um, some of that weak acid left and also some of its conjugate base. So we would have a buffer. The half neutralization point, which is halfway here. So if the neutralization or the equivalence volume to hit the equivalence point is 25, the half point would be 12.5. So that half neutralization, the pH should be equal to the pKa of that weak acid. Um, at the equivalence point, we've used up all of the weak acid. Now all we have is the conjugate base. And so we could look at that to determine what that pH is. Using the Kb of that conjugate base and our ice table, we could find out what pH we should see at the equivalence point. Beyond that, now we have a mixture, in this case of a, a weak base, that conjugate base, and a strong base. And when we have a mixture of those two, the strong base is the overwhelming factor. So we could just look at what is the OH concentration from that strong base, and that would tell us what our pH is. Um, so we have two 25 milliliter samples of unknown monoprotic weak acid. So monoprotic, single H plus to it. So HF, uh, acetic acid are examples of monoprotic weak acids. Um, uh, A and B are titrated with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. So we're using um, a strong base and it's uh, monohydroxide, it only is one OH per molecule. The titration curve for each acid is sown below. Which of the two weak acids is more concentrated? So in this case, you'll notice our equivalence volume or point is um, above a pH of seven. So that confirms that this is a weak acid with a strong base. This sample B is the same, but if we look at it, when do we reach that um, Equivalence point, does it happen at the same time or at a different time? Well, you'll notice here the equivalence volume is about oh, 34, and here our equivalence volume is about 23 or something like that. So which is more concentrated? The one that took more base uh, to get it there, acid A. Um, same thing, uh, 225 milliliter samples of monoprotic weak acid titrated with that same 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution, the titration curve shown below, which of the two acids has the larger Ka. So for this one, actually, the larger the Ka, the stronger the acid it is, that should translate right there when we only have that weak acid, so that's at 0 0.0. And what's the lower pH? This one has a pH of about 3.5. This one has a pH of about 2.6. So acid B, should have the larger Ka, should be the more acidic or the stronger acid of the two. Um, I'm going to stop there. Actually, uh, I'll stop there and then we'll look at some other examples and then I'll, we'll actually solve some problems uh, in the future video where it'll ask you, you know, what's the pH at the half equivalence point or things like that. Um, so we'll see you in the next video. Trying to keep these short but sweet. Uh, have a good day.